probably not the best first date movie. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my coverage of the 2023 Sundance Film Festival, today I'm going to be talking about the 2023 psychological thriller dark comedy Cat Person, which will be released in theaters on October 6th. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations. So be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Cat Person stars Emilia Jones, Nicholas Braun, and Geraldine Viswanathan, and was directed by Susanna Fogel. Based on Kristen Rupenian's 2017 short story of the same name, it tells the story of 20-year-old Margot, who begins a relationship with the much older Robert. It's always a bit of a challenge when you encounter a film that's intentionally uncomfortable. Sometimes it almost feels like self-sabotage on the part of the movie, because why would audiences want to subject themselves to something that causes discomfort? This obviously varies a bit depending on the genre or the story being told, but usually people will push through discomfort for an important historical story, compelling characters, or prescient themes. But aside from certain subgenres of horror, uncomfortable movies are rarely perceived as enjoyable or entertaining. So when you come across a movie that manages to entertain while also delivering some of the most cringe-inducing, audience-groaning sequences of the year, it's a bit unexpected. What isn't unexpected, though, is that a movie like that would be divisive. And Cat Person is just that, a movie that's bound to be one of the most divisive films of the year. Cat Person approaches a modern story with modern sensibilities and style. This is very much a millennial and older Gen Z focused story, but that isn't to say it's a film that won't strike a chord with other generations. Like so many other movies, it's a film about dating and a relationship. Each generation has had its share of movies that explore the then current state of dating, and Cat Person tackles the modern dating scene in an interesting way. As it tells its story, it maintains a unique tonal balancing act. Some of the time, it feels like a quirky rom-com with big doses of awkwardness and cringy relationship fails. At other times, though, it's a highly creepy and stressful thriller. It's a little clumsy with its tonal transitions as it goes back and forth, and it loses its nuance with a very over-the-top third act, but the tonal dichotomy worked for me. Now, it's not unusual for a film to blend together or mash up genres and tones, but awkward rom-com and creepy thriller don't really seem like a natural fit. However, Cat Person does it to make a point. It highlights how your initial reading of a situation can influence your overall perception of what's happening. If things seem comfortable and non-threatening, then we usually perceive something favorably. But if there's a sense of doubt or discomfort, then we perceive it negatively. It really all comes down to how something's presented. For example, Many scenarios and interactions that we regard as romantic and cute in lighthearted rom-coms come across as creepy and unsettling in other film genres, or in real life. And so Cat Person explores that cute, creepy balance, and how different generations and different genders perceive it. As I mentioned before, Cat Person is a frequently uncomfortable film. There's some super cringy stuff here. Not in a the-movies-cringy kind of way, but rather scenarios that occur unfold in very cringe-inducing, secondhand embarrassment kind of ways. The relationship at the center of this movie is almost unbearably awkward. Texting scenarios, things that certain characters say, some of the most awkward, cringy moments of intimacy put to film. The audience at my Sundance screening were groaning in awkward discomfort at many parts of this movie. But is it just a case of bad chemistry and awkward miscommunication, or is it something more sinister? Which brings us back to that cute, creepy, rom-com or thriller perception dichotomy. The third act of this film, which strays from the plot of the short story, does solidly plant this film in one of those two categories. It's a big escalation that doesn't really fit with everything that came before and feels a bit sudden, but it wasn't enough to ruin or damage the movie for me. When watching a movie premiering at a film festival, you never really know what to expect from it. But I've got to say that I didn't anticipate Cat Person to be as relatable of a story as it is, barring the over-the-top third act, of course. Some of the relatable stuff is relatively benign. 
these two characters meet at a movie theater and bond over film. So there's a lot of relatable movie discussion and references for film fans to latch onto. But a lot of the less than benign stuff is unfortunately relatable as well. The repeated editing of texts before you send them, elements of the awkward dating interactions, the second guessing about whether a person or scenario is actually as creepy as it feels, nearly all of the internal monologue scenarios that Margot goes through over the course of the film. Obviously, I can only approach this relatability aspect of the story from a female perspective, but there's a lot more reality and truth to much of the story than I think most of us will want to admit. And this is a film that certainly holds a mirror up to the audience, and forces us to see at least shades of ourselves in these characters. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the relatability. Given how uncomfortable much of the film is, relatability might seem like a weird thing to put on the pro side in this case, but it's a movie that's gonna strike a chord with people. Whether you like it or not, most of us probably leaning on the not side, you're gonna see aspects of yourself in these characters. In talking to other critics at Sundance, and even just in listening to people in the lobby after the screening, it seems like the vast majority of women in attendance had experienced aspects of the story in their real lives. Whether we're talking the awkward dating interactions, the internal monologue components, or whatever, there was this undeniable aura of relatability, frequently expressed during the screening as collective knowing groans. The second pro is the tonal blend. I have a feeling this could end up on the con side for some, because the execution is a bit clumsy towards the end, but it's solidly in the pros for me because of what it accomplishes with its blend. For much of the story, Cat Person bounces back and forth between being an awkward, cringy rom-com and a creepy thriller. With the unique depictions of Margot's running internal monologue, we see how various scenarios and interactions can get put through different perceptive lenses. Are these just the benign actions of an awkward guy who can't pick up on social cues and whose only ideas of romance come from Harrison Ford movies? Or are these the actions of a creepy and potentially dangerous person? It's a confusing gray area for much of the movie, as in real life, and the film forces us to acknowledge how our often movie-influenced perceptions of romance might come across a bit differently in real life. On the con side, the biggest issue is the third act. Even at Sundance, it seemed like detractors of the film pointed to the third act as this monolithically movie-ruining thing. So even though the third act is on the con side for me, I'm not going to get all unnecessarily hyperbolic about it like many have. The third act escalates in an over-the-top manner that doesn't perfectly align with the story that came before, but it does make for an exciting cinematic climax to a movie that, for much of its runtime, was constantly playing with our nerves. It makes the choice to remove the uncertainty about the film's tone, and about the nature of the relationship in the story, which comes across bluntly when compared to its slightly more nuanced lead-up, but it's far from a movie-ruining ending. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Cat Person or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Cat Person 4 out of 5 paws. It's an entertaining but incredibly stressful and uncomfortable depiction of the fears and challenges of modern dating. The third act is a little jarring, and the intentional cringiness of what comes before might be too much for some people, but this is the type of film that any woman will surely be able to identify with. I would recommend Cat Person to people interested in a thriller that deconstructs the difficulties of modern dating. Its themes have been addressed in other recent films, but if you want a dash of dark humor and don't mind sitting through some awkward dating scenarios, this might strike a chord with you. However, if you're somebody who's uncomfortable with seeing less than perfect parts of yourself reflected back at you through a film's characters, this might be one that'll upset you. Perhaps in different ways, depending on which side of this relationship you identify with. If you liked Cat Person, I would recommend Promising Young Woman, another film that hones in on modern dating interactions and themes of consent. This movie takes a slightly more revenge thriller route with its plot. It's still got its fair share of uncomfortable moments, but it's another one of those rare movies that manages to be entertaining in spite of the discomfort. If you want another story about the darker side of modern app-based dating, you should check out Fresh, 
I don't want to spoil the shocking surprises of this film, which boasts a great cast and some similar themes, but I do want to warn you, this is not a movie for the squeamish. And if you're interested in another recent film about toxic relationships and bruised egos, you might want to watch Fair Play. As another movie that premiered at Sundance this year, Fair Play approaches themes of gender politics, power dynamics, and consent via a corporate drama, but manages to still be a very uncomfortable watch. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Cat Person? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's another movie that you genuinely enjoy, despite it making you extremely uncomfortable? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.